Hello you all, I'm Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And today I would like to have a discussion, even though it's just me talking for right now, on my Christian experience versus my spiritual experience thus far. Now, I have to give this disclaimer in these type of videos. If you are a Christian that believes Christianity is the only way anything else is the devil this may not be the video for you just because it may trigger you just because you may feel like i'm attacking your beliefs when this is just personally my experience so for everyone else feel free to share your experiences down below if you're now spiritual on a spiritual journey continuing your spiritual journey or leaving the church as well let me know down below and to further understand my perspective Make sure you guys go watch my Why I Left the Church video and that'll just help you further understand what I'm talking about and you may be able to relate to some of these topics as well. For my so fellow spiritual people who do not mind rocking a statement piece, this amethyst right here, I like to call it raw magic, is the perfect crystal of the day. It was my first crystal that I ever purchased and it has strong capabilities to activate spiritual awareness, amplify psychic abilities and your intuition and has strong strong healing and cleansing powers and you can get your raw magic from blackwitchyaya.com so initially i wanted to do a video on christianity versus spirituality but due to the fact that both topics are different to different people i didn't want to just generalize one and talk about another i may seem biased or whatever so i just decided to solely talk about my experience with both first let's start off with christianity because that's what i was initially introduced to growing up i always say i didn't grow up in the church but i grew up going to church we'll be on a streak for a couple years then we stopped for a long time then we started going back my dad's cousin was the pastor so it was that family connection there i was related to majority of the people in the church and honestly when I was younger, it's just, I was kind of just going with the flow. My parents told us to go, so we went. I was going with the flow of my older sisters. My parents were going and they eventually stopped going for reasons I found out once I was older and I wish I was able to stop going when they stopped going. But I was just going with the flow and majority of the time as I continued to get older and just wanted to stray away from Christianity, just because I didn't agree with a lot of the concepts and we'll get into that later. I just really started to go because my sisters are going. So I was already an oddball. So I felt like, okay, if my sisters are going, I have to go too, just so I won't look crazy or look rebellious. I was so happy my senior year when I was in the IB program, I could use homework, EEs, AEs, and all that stuff as an excuse why I couldn't go because I had to focus on school. But I just didn't agree with it. I didn't like the atmosphere. Not that it was toxic, it's just, for me, being a naturally excited person, always happy, always optimistic, I just felt, okay, so why is everybody crying? Why is everybody always going through something? Why is this lady always sick and always asking for healing but not being healed? What are you doing to heal yourself? As I got older, I started to hold accountability to other people in the church. Of course, in my head, because, you know, I was still a child, you know, you stay in a child's place. But I just started to notice a lot of things going on with the people who called themselves Christians that I was just. So is this Christianity always being sad, always begging, always crying when you hear a song? Like, why are you guys so sad? So for myself, my Christian experience was very strict. It was very you do this don't ask questions why just do it you need to cry when everybody else is crying or you look like the devil so when scriptures are being read i just was like so they did what and why was that allowed why does that make sense because this doesn't but this is so old so you telling me that people have to follow these same rules from years and years ago even though times has changed and we're constantly evolving changing to different people we have to abide by these rules and if we step away from one we're not good people and they say that all sins are the same but when one person cheats you guys forgive them quicker than if someone is gay because that's a sin it's just i started to question little things and teachings like that and with me being a nerd in school always inquisitive i was inquisitive about those teachings as well just because i'm not one to just willingly accept information if it doesn't make sense to me so with me asking all those questions to myself and just realizing this isn't making sense i'm not sure why i just don't feel like i belong here 
I feel bored when I'm here. I don't understand all the hooting and hollering. Why do you have to scream each time you teach something? What's what what what's making you scream? Like what's all the aggression for? I thought we were talking about something good. Then constantly begging for money for offerings. Then bl blaming us if they didn't make enough money when people were in here are crying for jobs. It was just a lot of stuff that wasn't making sense. Now I know everybody's church is different. I did visit other churches. The only thing that I really solely liked about visiting other churches were the music. I'm a music person. I love music. So, you know, when a song got a good beat, you know, I'm into it. I'm not going to cry. But if it's a bop, I'm going to be like, okay, I see you. Praise them. I forgot the term for it. Was it praise and worship or the other word? I would say the entertainment aspect of it. I like the singing. I like the dancing. I was so unintu church. I tried to force myself to like it. I end up praise dancing as well. But even with that, it was just just wasn't fitting and i know to other people they live by the church they go to church if they don't go to church they feel guilty they just have to be in the building and for me i was just going through the motions until i was old enough to say i ain't going and then for myself i always question why do i have to follow these rules in order to be a good person and this is all before i knew about spirituality and that even being an option these are just questions i always ask myself like so if i don't abide by these rules i'm not a good person and taking in that information you automatically feel guilty for every single thing you do that's not christian like i found myself beating myself up if i cheated on a test in school i'm like oh god i'm about to burn in hell i just cheated on this test and it's like no girl you know i be pro I'm like if you're not cheating you're not trying or just even slipping and saying a curse word I just was like oh my gosh Jesus please forgive me like it was just this fear concept that I didn't understand and I didn't like I knew naturally I was a good person I was just tired of feeling like anytime something bad happened or didn't happen in my favor I was being punished it was a do as I say not as I do or you will get punished type of balance aspect and I just knew for myself I'm a good person I don't need to follow somebody else's rules and force myself to act in certain ways in order for me to make it into heaven I just didn't it just didn't fit right if it don't fit don't force it I had friends in college who were Christians and they would invite me to their church. So I like being able to, you know, share that experience with them. But I just naturally wasn't into it. I didn't feel the urge to go as many people felt. I was just, I'm just here so I won't look crazy. That was my model for a lot of things going to church as a kid. I'm here so I won't look crazy. When my former friends invited me in college, I'm just here so I won't look crazy. Because everyone seemed to be so into it. I felt like the odd one. Like I, like I said before, I knew I was a good person. I knew I had good energy. I knew I treat people right. It's just that everyone around me was so Christian to the point where I was like, let me just go with the flow. Let me, yeah. And I didn't know a Bible verse to save my life. I felt that so many people were Christians around me just because a few years ago, spirituality wasn't as big as it is now and welcoming. It was like, if you weren't walking around with crystals heavy on your neck, some sage your sage ashe shirts from blackwitchyaya.com or just really looking like a person who practices something different you really didn't know like in my head i thought majority of people were just christian muslim or anything else i thought mostly everything was religion just because i was so oblivious to spirituality at least that i thought now this is transitioning over to my spiritual experience growing up as a kid i told you guys before i knew stuff had energy without it being known to myself as the word energy. I used to write in school, I used to thank my pencil for letting me write, thank chairs for letting me sit in it, thank the day for being such a good day. I knew I was talking to somebody or felt the need to talk out loud to some things or some beings, but I just, it just came naturally to me. I didn't think much of it. So now looking back on it, I feel like that was my self, my spirit guys kind of being like, okay, girl, you a little different from everybody else. And I'm glad I wasn't made to be comfortable within the church because I feel like I would have been missing out on a lot of other stuff that I discovered about myself that I grew with within spirituality. But like I say, no matter if you just becoming and introducing into spirituality, you start your spiritual journey from the day you are born. So I feel like I was always destined to be in this spot. Now, I fully got introduced to spirituality when I met my boyfriend, the Baron. I was oblivious to just crystals and herb stuff and i was taught to think divination witches and tarot card readings are evil so i naturally just avoided it because you know i didn't want to feel guilty or get punished and go to hell 
but I was officially introduced to spirituality due to my boyfriend, the Baron. Now with him, he slowly introduced it to me because of course, during that time, it wasn't as popular or welcoming now, or maybe just because I'm in the spiritual world, I kind of see it more often. But then it was kind of like, I told him, you know, I'm Christian just because I was taught to say that I was trained to say that that was the only thing I really knew. But once I got introduced to spirituality, seeing what he does, seeing what he practices, it just felt natural. It didn't feel forced. I didn't feel guilty about anything. I began to know myself, what I vibe out to when I'm vibrating high, when I'm vibrating low, thanking the spirit guys, thanking the Orisha, giving offerings to both the spirit guys, Orisha, your ancestors, and knowing the importance of those beings and those energies that are around you and that are with you. And once I realized that it was easy for me to catch on because I was already practicing it, without knowing it of course in the adolescent way thank you pencil for drawing my picture of an apple good to now thank you deep deep whatever deity you practice for me having a good day for protecting me for me being five minutes late and missing that accident that could have been me just realizing and noticing that there are energies or and with me being taught that those energies that are around you are evil really just let me know that these energies actually exist and it's not a figment of our imagination or just a little cartoon drawing that we see on disney's these are actual things that are around us that help us every single day and control different elements of nature different elements of our body that there's just so much more than what we see in this world which i felt that we were taught to think in church you're it's jesus god you do good go to heaven go to hell that's it that's all the most depth they got into it was there's angels that's about it you leave the dead alone from ashes to ashes dust to dust you leave them alone and now being introduced to spirituality you know that this is an evolving world nothing is really set and done that's it that's all it's all energies that continue to be here whether we're here or not so we have to acknowledge those energies because they've been here before they're wise they have information they want to protect that really them. touched me when it came to spirituality and impacted me was the guilt-free concept spirituality is different for everyone so no one can say you're doing this right you're doing this wrong you have to do it this way even though there are people who do that but just knowing spirituality for my own journey and what i do you're able to take in information and apply it and take in information that your body provides you downloads from the universe and apply it as well so not wanting to be a part of a structure where it's so concrete do this or do that i naturally want to do what feels good to me of course there's general rules and concepts that we follow but everybody does it differently for example spiritual people most of us we all meditate that's like a general thing we be out here med um we be out here meditating but for me i may meditate right in the center of my living room with my singing bowl and just you know some hurts playing in the back some incense burning where the next person is like i have to go to the park and lay in the grass or someone's like i have to put my feet in the ground to meditate i have to meditate in my car because i find peace although we're all doing it different ways at the end of the day we're still meditating but our spirit is leading us to do something that feels right to us and we do what feels right to our spirit the general thing is meditation but there are so many different ways that people choose to do it and i like being open to that type of concept being open to do hey you do divination but i do divination this way and i hear from spirit this way i have to hold my ear to the ground to hear from spirit it's different elements but it's all divination if you have that or gift. doing candle magic some people may say i have to do my candle magic with the full moon i have to do my candle magic with the crescent moon i have to do my candle magic at 205 p.m every single day they're all doing candle magic but they do it in different ways that fits them and those elements and those branches of the different rules and whatever practices are what i like to do because it gives me the freedom to do what's right for me without feeling guilty or feeling like i'm doing this wrong i'm doing that wrong and that's why i created this channel because it just shows my experience with stuff that's why i say always comment down below so we can talk because it's good to hear from different people what they do and what they practice so you can adapt different things learn about it learn about the culture why do they do it really appreciate the source of where it comes from because spirituality is so different across the world natives may practice this way africans may practice this way blah 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 it's cool to me i find it nice to learn about all the cultures what they practice will it help me grow can i adapt it and kind of make it my way that'll help me and appreciate the culture behind it as well i just like the freedom of being able to experience all elements of spirituality without being tied to one and that's the main reason why i love being 
spiritual understanding that we are one with nature we're a balance we connect with each other there is no way that we're all separate beings in a flowing energy what happens to nature happens to us what we may feel on the inside may happen on the outside like i always say as above so below as within so without once you realize that we have god within us we can adapt those same abilities and just I don't know the perfect way to say that we have pieces of God and energies within us. So we're able to make decisions and make things happen as well. That's why spelling is a spell. We're able to manifest. We're able to create because we are spiritual beings having a physical, just human experience. I'm able to just trust myself rather than trust a book or trust a pastor, trust a deacon or trust some other prophet. You're able to trust yourself. Trust what your elders tell you if you are initiated and you need that guidance and structure to keep you on the right path. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not ever against initiation. Some of y'all are initiated and watch me. So I never want to be like, don't get initiated because girl, it's just not the path for me. But some people want that family structure, want that guidance, want they know they want to know they have that one person that they can go to for blah, blah, blah. For myself, like I always say, I'm out here in these spiritual streets just doing what feels good to me as long as I'm appreciating the culture, not culture appropriating, just sharing my knowledge and what I feel, I'm good to go. Whereas I felt with Christianity, it was kind of you have to fit into this box because this is the right box. You have to believe this. Don't ask questions. That's just what it is. It's like that for a reason. Whereas with spirituality, it acknowledges that everybody is different. Everybody's going to connect to different practices, different rituals, different whatevers. And that's okay because at the end of the day, as long as you're a good person, you're putting good karma out in the world, do what works for you. When it comes to spirituality, I want to clear this up as well. I often say, do what feels right to you. Do what feels right to you. There are no strict rules and regulations. There's general concepts, tips and tricks. I don't want you to feel like, oh, we all just out here free balling, girl. You just do whatever you want to do. Of course, there's general things that you abide by, but you're able to adapt it to work to what works for you. For example, with my money candles, I list out in the instructions. This is what I do. These are the days I like to do it. This is when I like to do it. But listen to yourself. I like to have my money candle on my desk. You may want to have your money candle next to your nightstand. Do whatever feels right to you because when you find yourself trying to follow the strict rules of other people and what they do and copy, you're going to find yourself feeling like you're right back in church following the rules and regulations that are set out in front of you. And basically, I like to think of my channel as a documentation of my spiritual concepts, journey, information, and just a sharing platform. And you can tell from my content, I'll talk about the Zodiacs. I'll talk about the moon. I'll talk about the Orisha. I'll talk about alchemy. I'll talk about different elements because those are the things I ca I'm called to and that I'm interested in and that are helping me grow and better understand myself spiritually and the spiritual world that we live within. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Like I always say, as above, so below low as within so without as the universe so the soul until next time you guys i say bay bay